Hey guys, welcome to chapter 3, section 3. And this, this section is going to be all about HTML forms and the new form elements and input types and different functionality that comes with forms in HTML5. Um, not, all major sub, not all major browsers support the new form elements, however, you can start using them. Uh, if they're not supported, they'll just be used as regular text fields. And what's new with forms in HTML5 is the input types, which is very cool, probably the, the best feature, the best new thing about uh, HTML5 and forms. And we also have new tags, and we have new list elements. Now, there's, there's quite a few new input types. Um, at the moment, you know, but before in HTML4, all we had was the input text, uh, password, ch checkbox, radio, um, and a couple others. But now we have the color, uh, range, search. We have um, date, different date pickers, and email, URL. So I'm, I'm going to go through these um, real quick in this slideshow. Uh, and then the second part of the, the section will actually put this to work in our project. So the first thing, the first one up we have is the new input field email. And the new email input type allows the form to validate an email address without any use of JavaScript. Now in the past, if you wanted to uh, validate an email and make sure that it's an email address going in, you would need to use, um, you need to use JavaScript or some server-side pro processing just to check and see if it is an actual email address and it would take a, a decent amount of code it, it, you know um, but this makes it extremely easy all you have to do is use the type email you know usually you'd have text or, or whatever but if you just use if you use the type email it's going to validate it for you right then and there all right, the next one we have is color, and that's another one that if you wanted to use before, you'd have to use some, some pretty heavy JavaScript, and this, this is as simple as using the word color in the type attribute of the input field, and it, it, you'll get a little box where you can choose the color. And we have a date field, again, no JavaScript needed. We'd have a, a pop-up calendar to select a date. Now range, range is another cool one. It gives us control for entering a number whose exact value is not important. It's, so it's basically a little slider control that you would slide um, to, to get the values. And, and we'll be implementing these, these different input types in the, neck, in, the, um, in the programming part of this section. In usage, you'd have the type range and then you could, you could actually specify a minimum and then a maximum and you'd have a slider that would go in between those ranges very cool okay so next we have the TEL the tell input which is used for a telephone number so it should uh, if the field isn't a valid telephone telephone number you'd get a, 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 a pop-up saying that time time is another one like date you get you can select a time or enter a time um, URL, this is used to define a field for entering a link. Uh, if it's not in a, a link, it won't go through. It'll, you'll have a little message that pops up. And that's the last one that we're going to talk about. Now we have, we have some new form elements, and there's three big ones. Um, I'm not going to go through them in detail because they can get a little advanced. Um, and I really don't see where I can fit them into the project. But first we have the data list tag or the data list form element. And it specifies a list of predefined options for an input element. Now it's, this is different than a select tag or a select list. We click an arrow and a um, drop down would pop up and, you, and you'd select one. This is different. This is um, an actual regular text field and as you type it's used as an autocomplete so if you have a certain value in the list and they start typing then it'll pop up like say um, I don't know say it was a location um, input and you typed B if we had Boston in the 
in the list of options, then Boston would pop up and they could select it without having to type the rest. So uh, pretty cool. It's use the input elements list attribute to bind it together with data list. And it's a little hard to explain, but I'm going to show you in the next section in the um, in the programming part of this section how how this works. And actually, I can show you right here. This is an example. So we'd have an input list. Li we'd use the list um, element attribute, excuse me, uh, of browsers, and then we'd have a data list with the ID of browsers, and then we'd have our options. So if if the, in this text someone types, you know, they type FIR, then Firefox will actually pop up. So it's just, it's an autocomplete, you know, it's used for simplicity and to just make things easier for the user. Next we have the key gen form element, which is pretty advanced. It's a, it, it's a way to authenticate users, um, you know, client side way to, to authenticate users. You'd probably want to use something else as well, maybe some PHP or, or some kind of server-side programming. But it specifies a key pair of generator field in a form. Um, when the form is submitted, two keys are generated. One is private and then one is public. And then the private key is stored locally and the public key is sent to the server. So it does have some server activity. Um, I haven't even, I haven't used this yet. Uh, it looks pretty neat but it kind of it looks a little advanced um, here we have an example we have a form going to a demo.php file using the get method um, so we have a user we'd have a text field and have the name and then we would have encryption with a key gen tag and the name security and then the submit button so uh, I'm not going to get too too deep into that um, and the next thing we have is the output tag, which performs a calculation, and it would show the result in an output element. And here we have an example of that. Um, you know, it's a little complex. We have the on input um, attribute with some little bit of JavaScript, and we provide the range. Uh, I'm not going to have an example for this um, in this section, but we might revisit it in chapter four or five. So that's that's the gist of it. Uh, all the really cool input types. Um, now we're gonna get into our project. We're gonna go to the blue blue developer directory project and transfer our current form into an HTML5 form.